entitled neighbor keeps using her yard, she gets spectacular payback. The police had made visited multiple times throughout the years and plenty of drama had come with them. She smiled as she knocked on the door and gave them a paper that would change everything. Emily Swanson had finally had her dreams come true. Through hard work and clever saving, she managed to rent a gorgeous five-bedroom house in Hawaii right on the beach. She and her husband felt that they were living the good life until they discovered what kind of person their neighbor was. The first outburst their neighbor had was after they threw away an old playset. Tanya loved her leopard print and slanderous shirts. She told them they couldn't throw away her children's toys. Emily had to hold back all her fury. The playset in question was on their property but the landlord didn't care. They didn't mind the kids playing with it as long as they were respectful. Emily already felt that she wasn't going to get along with this woman. Then the music started. Tanya took their kindness too far by having a huge gathering in Emily's backyard. To take it even further Tanya ordered that she and her husband stay indoors as it was a family event only. Then it took a step further. While Emily and her husband hid out in the living room to escape the loud music one of Tanya's guests stumbled through their patio door. Emily told him it wasn't Tanya's house but he cut her off saying, Tanya said she owned the whole property and to use whichever bathroom. Then Tanya stormed in. There was a blur of leopard print and cheap perfume as Tanya stormed in through the door. Emily could barely register what was going on she started shouting about being embarrassed in front of her guests. Emily could feel the entitlement coming from Tanya as her blood started to boil. Tanya had to be taken down a notch. Emily and her husband were spending money on renovations so they felt that they should spend a bit extra. A nice patio kitchen and something really special for her neighbor Tanya. Then she heard her walking towards the new renovations. Tanya was wide-eyed and demanded that they explain to her what was going on. Emily explained the renovations and her neighbor's eyes grew with hunger. She was clearly already planning her next gathering on their property. Emily could barely contain her laughter as she walked away. The one thing that Tanya didn't know about was the fence that they were planning on installing. When she finally found out a war between them broke out. And Emily was happy to play ball. Then Billy arrived on the scene. Billy was Tanya's boyfriend. He immediately began to throw his cigarette butts and beer cans over the fence and into Emily's yard for, disrespecting his woman. He and Tanya became true neighbors from hell, having loud arguments and parties at all hours of the night. Billy was obviously on Tanya's side about the fence fiasco. And Billy also had a boat. It was a 30-inch fishing boat, to be precise. Only, Tanya's side of the property was only allocated 15 inches of dockage. Emily's side of the property, as the larger and more expensive side of the duplex, was blessed with around 150 inches of docking space. To make some extra money, Emily and her husband would rent the extra docking spaces that they didn't need on a month-to-month -month basis and renters would tie up their boats on their property line. So, what did Billy and Tanya decide to do? One day, Emily was perplexed to find that someone had left a nasty review for her on the site that they used to rent out the docking spaces. The disgruntled customer said that Emily and her husband were rude and had not honored a verbal agreement to let them use the space for three more months. After a phone call, Emily quickly put two and two together. Emily was furious. The couple had posed as her and her husband while they were out of town, had rudely told the renter to remove their boat, and had audaciously parked Billy's fishing boat in the space. Unbelievable. Emily wasted no time. Now it was her turn to call the cops. The situation was getting well out of hand. The cops ordered Tanya and Billy to move the boat immediately or it would be towed. Tanya and Billy began to scream that the boat is on their property and that Emily was a liar. Then, they switched tack and screamed that nobody could own the water. After this final incident, Emily vowed to get payback, and she didn't care if it took years to get it. It was supposed to years of blissful mornings with fruit salad and watching the ocean. Instead, cigarette butts and other garbage were tossed over regularly. Weekly parties became louder and louder, and Tanya's horrible children's new favorite pastime was throwing lit fireworks at her boat. Emily felt helpless. But karma was waiting just around the corner. Months turned into years and the police eventually knew their address by heart because it was the horrible neighbor's main ammunition. Emily turned despondent as her heavenly paradise turned sour and rotten. She had just about given up on her dreams and even considered moving just to get away from it all. But then, fate stepped in. It didn't matter that the police sided with Emily every single time. 
Each financial installment in their rent-to-own property felt more like a devastating investment into misery. Sickening stress was now a constant in their life. She was on the verge of giving up altogether when the landlord suddenly offered a very interesting opportunity. The housing market was insane and the old man was tired of being a landlord, especially to the crazy girl that never shuts her pie hole. Emily's jaw dropped to the ground as he offered the wonderful, utterly magical solution to all of her problems. Fruit salad and tranquility would be in her future again. The old man was desperate to sell the other half of the duplex and wanted to give the first chance to Emily and her husband. She felt a new surge of joy swell in her heart at the idea. It was extra great because she would be able to move her aging parents in beside them. It didn't take long for the paperwork to go through and the final plan to unfold. They weren't idiots. Before the glorious day, they made an LLC and confirmed the end of lease was soon, as well as had the notice papers ready. It was with immeasurable pleasure she knocked on Leopard Lady's door, handed over the notice, and asked for the rent. But that wasn't the best part. It turned out the wretched neighbor had just moved her mother in. The old woman wasn't just mortified at her daughter's behavior, she repeatedly and sincerely apologized for everything that had happened over the years. I didn't raise my daughter to act like this kind of maniac. Leopard Lady turned beet red with rage and embarrassment. It was an alliance Emily would have never imagined. Not only did the old mother keep an exquisite and effective peace, but she also ended up being very pleasant company. Every Wednesday evening Emily and the woman had drinks and baked, and each time Tanya blistered in silent anger. But one thing held true. Emily and her husband weren't malicious people. She was more than happy to let them stay at base necessity rent until they managed to find a new home. Part of her was going to miss the old woman and their sudden, brief friendship. She was the neighbor she had dreamed of the entire time. In the end. The house was finally emptied and moving trucks sped away. There was one last, spiteful, yet hilarious, letter left in their mailbox, on animal print paper no less. Now, Emily could finally breathe. It was time to enjoy their slice of paradise.